Okay, so looking at the MDT that we're going to be using in today's knockhard route, so you'll be starting off here and you will mount up and you'll fly all the way over to this first area here. We're going to start by doing the outside pad here and we're going to hero because it's fortified. You could elect to double it pending on key level and affixes and things like that. It is fairly risky though, there is a lot of mobs. To play it safe, we just do the outside. As I said, it's fortified, so we're going to hero it. Then we're going to clear up this first Dragonlance defense pack here. We're then going to go into the middle and get rid of this uh, padding patrol through the middle here. Reason being is once you kill the three Dragonlance pack, the boss comes down. You don't want to have to fish this out sort of around the boss. So we come in and kill that. We then go and do this second dra uh, Dragonlance defense pack. We then grab the pat, this stationary pack up here. We then come over and finish our last Dragon uh, Lance defense pack. Then we do the first boss. Then we mount up and we jet all the way over here to the storm area. Now, if Hero is off cooldown, come and do this group nine or this pull nine here first with heroism, especially on fortified weeks. If it's Tyran, you'd be saving your lust for the boss. You could just start down here. You've got to kill four storm callers around here to get access to the raging tempest. So if Hero's on cooldown, we come down, we do this one first, we then come over here and do this. But if it's fortified, it's a good pack to lust on or hero on. We then kill the third storm caller pack here. Four uh, we then do the pat, sorry. Then we do the last storm caller pack. And then we do the raging tempest. With these little primal gusts, just grab them in with the first pack when they're around. We do that, we then mount up right over to this next area here. Coming down to this mound here, First up, reason being is there's a Risen Mystic in this pack. It has a haste buff ability. You can control undead it as a DK and you can buff your whole group with 20% haste for 10 seconds every 20 seconds. It's absolutely massive throughout this area. So we do this mound pack first. We then come over and do this Beast Caller pack here. We then grab the Soul Harvester mound over here with the birds that fly around. There's four Soul Harvesters here that you have to kill to gain access to the bosses as well. Once we've done that, we kill this Beast Caller pack up the top. We then do another pat here. We then kill another mound, another mound. And then we do this little pack in the middle here, which you can actually just activate the boss RP and then run between these two ones and grab this pat. Takes up to 95%, kill the two bosses. Then we mount up and we ride all the way up to the holes for the last boss here. And we ride up the side here and we run all the way down. We do these two mini bosses and then we do the final boss with some special boss tech and a rock and a shield. So let's get into the commentary. I'll show you how it's done. Legends, all right. So we're into this commentary here. Now I'm going to walk you through everything from that MDT into this run here, show you what the mobs do, the pull patterns and all that kind of jazz. So starting off here, key starts, get on your mount, double jump, bell roll, omega speed, whoosh, whoosh. We're trying to get to this first area as quick as we possibly can because we're actually going to lust this opening pull here when uh, it's fortified week. Tyrannical, you could still do the same if you wanted to double. Otherwise, you could save it for the boss. Depends on the key level, depends on your comfort level, all that sort of stuff. Now, if you were comfortable, you could double pull this pull with hero. It's kind of risky though on fortified as there's just so much going on. So we just elect to pull the outside roaming pack and we hero this one. And then we move into the first Dragonlance defense pack. So mobs you're going to encounter throughout these pulls. You're going to have these longbowmen. Now their unavoidable damage via their shoot it is pretty hectic. They also rain down arrows. They're the little brown swirls on the ground. And they'll also do a 40 yard frontal cone multi-shot attack, which can be really hard to see. So there's a, quite a bit of unavoidable damage coming out in these packs from them. The war spears have an ability called pierce. It's a bleed effect that stacks on the highest threat target, which should be a tank. You do want to prioritize killing these fairly quickly. The horn sounders will cast Rally the Clan. You need to ensure that this is stunned or disrupted or displaced, whatever you want to call it, to stop that cast as, buffs, uh, as it buffs the surrounding mobs, giving them a 50% increased physical damage buff. So you can see Rally the Clan went off there, where it was going off, and I just gripped it off. I just displaced it off. So your leg sweeps, your paralysis, your in-cap roars, your imprisons, you Chaos Novas, whatever you've got to stun, you can't interrupt it. Just make sure Rally the Clan doesn't go off. The Lance Masters always need to be faced away from your group. They have a cleaving strike. They'll also do a war stomp, which all you need to do as melee is just move out and move back in. They'll cast Disruptive Shout, which needs to be interrupted. Otherwise, people will end up spell locked for six seconds and your group will take AoE physical damage. 
As I mentioned around comfort level, you can elect to double that pool with hero at the start or just play it single and then go into this one like we've done. Now, once this pack is done, there are three Dragonlands packs that you have to clear. So we've just cleared one. So two more to go and the boss would become active. But there's also this pat in the middle. So we're going to go and grab the pat in the middle now. Because the last thing you want is the boss to land and then have to wait for this pat to kind of maneuver through and then be able to get it and go on. So we do the outside pack and that Dragonlance defense pack. We then do the middle pack here and then we're going to clear off the other two lance packs plus another roving pack and another pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip forward through this. Okay, so we finished that middle pack. This is the second uh, Dragonlance defense pack that we're in right now. Okay, so all we've done is we've killed the outside pack, the first Lance pack. We went into the middle and killed the middle patrol. We're now on this second Dragonlance pack. Okay, so all these mobs do the same thing. I'm just going to skip to the end of this one now so I don't lose you with what's going on. Now we've just finished that second Dragonlance pack and now we're moving up here just above it. You can see this patrol coming in and you can see this pat up the top. Now, really nice to have some form of closer here like a bomb limb up for this pool here is absolutely spectacular as they are a little bit spread away and you want to bring those longbows and that in so they're not out in Narnia just shooting. All the same mobs in here, nothing different at all. So we're going to skip through this one and onto the next Dragonlance pack. Okay, so we've killed that patrol and that other pack. And now we're moving over to the final Dragonlance defense pack. So just picking the Lance Master up, facing it away from the group, dodging the uh, rain of arrows that'll come down. There'll be the little brown swirls that are on the ground from the longbowmen. And then there's no horn sounder in this final one. So you don't have to worry about Rally the Clan. But they're generally one of the biggest sort of focused mobs for you as, you know, if Rally the Clan does get off, a lot of extra damage that's going out. So we're just going to finish this pack up and then it's boss time. So let's get to the boss. So this boss will periodically cast shards of stone, which is unavoidable damage. So a large chunk of everyone's health. It has a 60 yard range. You're not outranging it. You're just wearing through the damage and it's about half health, you know, 25% to half health pending on your key level. It's pretty chunky. Now a saboteur will spawn and you can see it there. It runs towards what's going to be the active lance that you're going to use to interrupt the eruption cast. You can't let them get to the dragon lance. If they do, they'll cast dismantle. It will then prevent you from doing it. You will then wipe. Everything works to stop the saboteur. Slows, stuns, roots, disrupt effects. Whatever you can do, try and position it so it's under the boss like this, so you can cleave off the boss and get the add down. Uh, Tectonic Stomp gets cast throughout the fight. This is that big brown circle we're moving out of right now. Nice and simple. Move out of it, move back in. At 100 energy, the boss will cast Eruption, which is where you need a ranged player, a healer or a ranged player, to click the active Dragon Lance, which the Saboteur is running to, which you haven't let them get to. It'll fire a lance at them. It'll stun the boss for five seconds, interrupt that eruption, and take 5% of the boss's health off as well. If you are uncomfortable on this boss, you can absolutely elect to break your trash up and send hero on it. On Tyran weeks, you know, that might absolutely be the play if you want to avoid the double. It's a really long boss fight, but as long as you've got some form of control and all CCs work on this saboteur, like you can see chains, grips, binding shots, ring of peace, vortexes there's a lot of options you have to make these you know not so much of an issue but just as i said keep them under the boss cleave them down you shouldn't have too many issues so once we've killed this we're going to mount off and we're going to head over to the storm area so let's skip over to there now okay so we're over in the storm area now we've still got hero on cd if hero wasn't on cooldown we would go up to the waterfall pack and we would blow hero on the waterfall pack just because there's a lot of damage that goes out because Hero's not up, we're killing this front storm pack here, and then we're going to go to the waterfall. Now, there's four storm callers in this area that you have to kill to activate the boss. I'm going to murder all their names right now. Boro, Aragna, Solongo, and Zari. They're all identical mobs. They just got different names. They'll cast Totemic Overload, which is an AoE damage to everyone surrounding the Storm Surge totem. So you want to nuke them down and the totem ASAP. The Primalist Arc Blades have a ridiculous 10 yard cleave via arcing strike. You can't interrupt it, but you can stun, disrupt it, and like a lot of the tank frontals, you can actually just move 
backwards or strafe out backwards and you'll avoid the actual hit. If you are going to get hit for it, know that it's magic damage, AMS, spell reflect, things like that. It does hit really hard if you are going to take them to the face. So we did that first part. We then saw these primal gusts, little tornado babies within the area. So we grabbed them and we're just going to uh, zerg them down as well. If you've got purges and things like that, purge the shields, get rid of them ASAP. Then we're going to mount up and we're going to go to the waterfall pack, which we are going to lust on. So moving over to the left here. Now this pack's fairly nasty. So on Fort Weeks, it's generally not a bad idea to hero this one. Uh, so in this pack, there's a new mob, the Primalist Storm Speakers, and these cast Storm Bolt, which will go on the tank. So any spare kicks you've got, throw them out on that. But the bigger focus that you want to kick is the Tempest. This is big AOE damage. It's a stacking dot. It can be dispelled. And whilst this is going on, you've still got a Storm Caller in here casting the Totemic Overload and the uh, from the Storm Surge Totem. You've also got the Summon Squalls to worry about, which are just the little orbs. But that Tempest is the big one. And as the tank, you're still dealing with these arcing frontals as well. And just trying to throw out any spare kicks you've got onto the Storm Bolts as well. Now, originally, I did think they were supposed to go on the tank, only the Storm Bolts. However, I'm pretty sure they go on everyone and can absolutely murder your group. So kicks, really, really important for what you can shut down here. Once that's done, we've got Spiteful. So we're just jumping off the edge. You would mount and fly down here. Moving back our neck into the next uh, Stormcaller pack here. So this is Salongo. Same thing, trying to kick these Storm Bolts. You can actually see here, that was really bad. Teague's just got murdered. I was holding my kick for one of the other abilities and a Storm Bolt went off and just murdered Teague's from like 100 to zero win, which I could have kicked and saved that. So kick coordination is really important and not underestimating just how much damage some of these storm bolts are going to do because they do do an insane amount of damage you really do be wanting to be kicking these so you can see here you know teague's getting hit with another one then we didn't have any kicks available that time um i gripped the tempest off so know that you can grip a bunch of these casts off as well some of the mobs aren't movable um, I don't think you can grip a storm caller off but a lot of the other unnamed sort of or regular mobs you can grip their cast off, which again, I, I should have made a lot better use of in this as well. So learn from my mistakes there, fam. So once this storm uh, caller is down, we're going to finish this one here and then we're going to go and get the pat. Now the pat you can see moves around the inside or the outside of the boss path here, sorry, or the this little moti water fashion around the boss. It's got a Thunder Beast and these two Storm Shields in it. Now, the Thunder Beast will cast a Chain Lightning. The targeted person just needs to get the fuck out 10 yards from everyone so the spell doesn't bounce around. It'll do a Thunderclap, big blue circle around it. Just move out, move back in. And lastly, it'll do a Thunder Strike. I couldn't even tell you what it does if it goes off. Just kick it. It's real simple. Just have a rotation. There's nothing else to kick in this pack. Just kick it forehead. Now, the Primal Storm Shield mobs, they have an Absorb via Storm Shield. Purge this ASAP. You want to kill these really quickly as they do a fair chunk of damage. They have a shield bash to any nearby enemy of 15 yards. So range, ensure that you're more than 15 yards away and you won't have to deal with that. But otherwise, as the tank, these do a lot of damage and they put that storm shield up really regularly. You can see it up at the moment. The big shield to have to DPS through. So if you do have the ability to purge it, make sure you do as the tank try and keep running away so we finished that i'm just going to start kiting back towards this area now where we're going to get into our final storm caller pack which we have a, a bit of a whoopsie daisy i think we lose two people through this one but same stuff with the mobs you know nothing different so we're going to skip forward and we're going to get to the boss okay so we've got through that we're moving into the second boss now the raging tempest now i'm just going to pause it really quickly uh, i just want to cover off something so when i ran in to engage the boss I made sure I engaged it when I was in melee range. I didn't torn it from out afar. If you engage this boss, you know, be it moon firing from 15 yards away or something like that, if no one is in melee range, the boss is going to cast Wind Burst. It's going to hit the next closest target in range. So if there was a DPS in front of you, it'll clap them. But otherwise, it hits you and it hits you really hard. As a DK, getting hit at range, not being out of Death Strike, isn't exactly ideal. So engage the boss when you're in melee range. 
Secondly, I'm going to talk about these lightning strikes. So in eight seconds, the boss is going to do lightning strike. Everyone in the group gets a big blue circle on them. As the tank, make sure you stay in in range. Now, when I was doing this key the other day, my dungeon knowledge is not great at the moment. Okay, I've done like, I did one week of keys prior to this and I hadn't done really anything decent in Knockard to sort of know all the mechanics and things like that, which is now why I'm making this video to hopefully help you. When you get the lightning strike as the tank, just stay in because I'm going to show you what happens and Perg saves me. But if I didn't have Perg, I'd be dead. So as the tank, what you're going to do is you're going to stay in when lightning strike happens. You don't move out. Everyone else gets away from you. Now, lightning strike comes out here. Big blue circle. Okay. I run out here thinking I'm helping. I'm like, I'm helping. I'm not. Windburst goes off and the lightning strike goes off. So I get saved by Perg because I cop a double hit there. If I had a stayed in, would have absolutely been fine. Another thing you can do, which I do on the next one, which I didn't even know you could do, but I was like, for science, let's figure it out, is you can AMS that lightning strike off as well. And then you don't even get an orb. And you can do that on every second one. If you're watching the timer and being a little bit proactive on your first one, they'll sync up where you'll have AM, uh, AMS for every second lightning strike that goes out, which is absolutely epic. Now, getting into this boss, the boss, when you engage, it'll start with 50 energy. And it takes around 30 seconds for it to hit 100 energy, in which case it'll cast that electrical storm that we just saw. During electrical storm, a bunch of orbs are going to be floating into the boss, lightning strikes going out. Try and stack up for your healer to make the healing easy for them. As the tank as well, when this is happening, you can just run around and collect a bunch of orbs while everyone is standing with the healer trying to make their life easy. You'll see that electrical surge comes out as well. When electrical surge comes out, it puts a buff on the boss that needs to be purged off. So hunters, demon hunters, all that kind of stuff. So you can see there the boss is buffed uh, for eight seconds. You want to try and get rid of that ASAP. Now you can see lightning strike coming up again. So I AMS this one. So I didn't get a circle means I can, well, means I can stay in range, but you've got to stay in range anyway. I took so much extra damage from wind bursts here that I just did not need to take. Um, so just be really aware of that nice little last second clear here, like absolute Chad gamers making sure here comes the electrical storm now. So you can see just how much damage is coming out here as the tank, you go and collect all of these orbs just so the healer can focus on planting, having everyone nice and close and healing through that. So that is pretty much it. We did have one death, but the rest of it was okay. But hopefully the biggest thing I can teach you is about learning uh, about the range wind burst here in the lightning strikes. Uh, and yeah, just, just not smart play by me, but I didn't know. And now I do. And now hopefully you do too. So we kill this boss. We head over to the next area. Let's go there. Okay, so we are flying over into this new area and we're coming over to this mound up the back left side here because there is a risen mystic in here and I got big DK tech coming at you like a freight train on the dead of night here. I'm going to control dead on the mystic and what that's going to do is I get a 20 second cooldown ability that my pet spams that increases my group's haste by 20% for 10 seconds. That is absolutely bonkers out of this world. So you can absolutely carry this area on that mob and you will only pretty much use it in this area, but it is massive value. So control the mystic and do this first mount. You're going to have risen warriors here, chucking mortal strike on you. You're going to have frontals coming out from the birds. There is a soul harvest on each of these mounts and you have to kill four of them to activate the boss. They'll do a death bolt volley kick it mass aoe shadow damage they'll do a shatter soul goes on three random players they do 30 percent less damage until they collect their soul or the uh, debuff expires so make sure they go and collect their souls they'll do a harvest soul as well which sucks the goop from dead bros within 20 yards of them it gives them a healing and damage buff so make sure you're getting the soul harvesters down quickly the death speakers will cast grasp of the dead it's a curse that goes on two random players you can decurse it it's a six second dot uh, and when it expires, it immobilizes the target it was on. So Tiger's Lust, Hand of Freedom, things like that. We get that pack down and then we move over into this Beast Caller pack here, which is just to the right of it. The Beast Caller does a Devour Spirit, and it, uh, which gains a soul-infused weapon. It just hits harder. It does a heavy slash on the tank and it does that Desecrating Roar, which you can stop with interrupts. So just make sure that you kick it. That's pretty much it. There it goes there. Now, there's one more thing I have to cover with the Death Speaker, which talk about when we get there so we just finish off this pack here 
that heavy slash does big damage too. Be don't underestimate because this isn't like a mound pack that it's not going to do damage. It does a fair bit of damage. So we're going to run around to this second mound for us now. Now, what I wanted to talk about the death speakers, which I hadn't had a chance to say, was chant of the dead. You want to stay at least 10 yards away from the mob to avoid being damaged. And when this is happening, any undead enemies that are up will get a 50% buff, which makes them really dangerous if the cast goes through. You can dispel the enrage, but if you can hit or just move the mobs away, that death bolt volley is really important as well. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. So we're going to get this second mound down and then we're going to move into another stationary pack. That's not a mound, so I'm just going to skip over that. Okay, so second mound is down to the right of it. Um, is this another beast caller pack so a bunch of frontals again heavy slash coming out from the beast caller kicking the disrupting um raw same stuff again that's it then we're going to head to another mound so we'll skip past this now to the next mound okay so heading into the third mound here and there will be a corruptor in this pack now they cast a dead bolt just kick whatever you can big thing to be avoiding here is get it, avoid being hit by the necrotic eruption there are these little green orbs that appear they pulse they explode just make sure that you move out of the way of them. Uh, you can see Shatter Soul going off here. So all of these Soul Harvesters, they have different names, much like the Storm Callers, but they all do the exact same thing. So just be aware of that. The Corruptor with the dead um, dead bolts, you can grip those casts off as well. You can displace them. So make sure you're making the most of that. If you don't have interrupts available, make sure you're using your stuns and your disrupts and things like that. To shut as many of these casts that are going off. You can see Chant of the Dead going off there, so you can't grip that off or anything like that. You can't interrupt it. You just have to move away. Rotting winds, dodging those frontals. That's about it. So now we're going to start making our way back around to the fourth mob, which is just over here in front of us, and it puts us right in front of the boss. There's also this pat in front of us, sorry, that we're going to grab. So this is Double Corruptor Mystic Warrior. Uh, so we make sure we kill these. You could take another, if your Mystic was, you know, pretty unhealthy, if you really wanted to, you could drop the Mystic, you know, kill it right now, which mine's like 50%. Could have dropped it and taken the new one at full health, you know, just for easy percent if you wanted to do that, because you are going to have to get rid of your Mystic before you go anyway. Otherwise, it bugs out in the area. So we deal through this. You can see that Swift Wind. That's what I've controlled the Mystic for to gain on our group, because it is just insane haste. We'll skip through this quickly to the last mound. Okay, so we're at the last mound here. So again, all the same stuff. What's going to happen here though, is when we finish this mound up, this trash, the soul harvester in particular, the boss RP will start once you go into range and trigger it. So what you're going to do is you have to be 93 to 95% in this area. I think 93 is a base. 94 is super safe. 95 is fine. What we're going to do is we kill this mound to activate the bosses. We run in and start the RP and then we go and get a little bit of extra trash and then we can just come back and start on the boss right away. So we'll get through this mound. Okay, so we've cleaned up this mound. Just going to run in, see boss RP has been started and then we're going to go and get, what do we need? We need an extra 4% basically. This beast caller pack in front of us wouldn't have been enough. So we actually have to do this one in the middle here. So we're going to run between these two packs. We're going to grab these mystic death speakers the corruptors again we've we've seen what these all do so the exact same stuff just watch where you're moving here as well if you elect to fight them in here there's more than enough room but just watch that you don't go pedaling into another pack or something like that to gain extra percent dodging those orbs dodging the swirls kicking what you can mortal strikes going out all the stuff we've covered let's get on to the boss already bosses now these share health via lifelink so always tank them together it means dps can cleave them all about big numbers they gain a stacking damage buff as well every five seconds that they're more than 20 yards apart. So be aware of that. Now, Tira starts at 50 energy and Maruk starts at zero. Upon reaching 100, they cast signature abilities much like Lords of Dread. Tira's is Gale Arrow and Maruk's is Earth Splitter. To start, make sure you bring Maruk uh, over to Tira because he's the uh, melee one and he'll run in, no worries. And then just try and keep them together as you can. Now you can see Tyrrell will do a spirit leap. It's really obvious where she's going on the ground. So keep an eye on that and just make sure that you start moving over there. So when it lands, you've got Maruk on there to cleave down. Now throughout the fight, Tyrrell will cast Quick Shot. Deals pretty significant damage depending on the target. Around 20 to 25% of the health. So be aware of that, keeping people topped up. Tyrrell will target every player except the tank with Gale Arrow. 
when she's at 100 energy. And this is that signature ability. You just need to move away and drop the Gale Tornadoes away from the boss. If you get hit, they do a knockback and they deal damage. If your group switched on, you can actually all go and stack with the arrow and then just move out of the way when all the tornadoes released. Tyrrell also cast Repel. It's a pushback. Instantly after this, you'll cast Guardian Wind. It's interruptible. You want to stop this pushback ASAP. So DK's Death's Advance, absolutely pog here. Um, Warriors, Leap, Heroic Leap. De uh, you know, Demon Hunters have got Infernal Strike. Brewmasters can set up Transcendence near it to go back in and interrupt. You've got all these options or just used a range kicked. Either way. Uh, moving to Maruk now, he has a tank buster called Brutalize. This hits really hard, so make sure that you're using active mitigation on it. Maruk will also, as he just did then, will periodically cast Frightful Roar. Run out so you don't get fear. Fear immunes do work to this though, like Berserker Rage, Tremor Totem, Cloak of Shadows, Lichborn, so you do have options for that. Maruk's signature ability has just gone off there. It's called Earth Splitter. You just need to dodge the big bad lines that come out. That is pretty much it. It can be a little bit hectic. It's mainly dealing with the tornadoes and just managing these brutalizers as the tank uh, buster because, you know, they do hit quite hard. We're about to see another uh, arrow come out here. So here comes Gale Arrow at the moment. So we had um, Cream just actually moved off to the side and then we had all the range stack on each other. So whatever you're comfortable with, you don't have to go and stack, but that's just a really easy way to deal with it. And the tornadoes will come out. And then they'll come back in. You just need to make sure you dodge them as they do do a bit of damage. I actually got hit there and got knocked back. So once they're dead, we're going to mount up and we're going to zoom, zoom, barrel roll off to the super secret entrance up to this side boss that I would assume everyone is doing right now. But if you're not, this is where you need to be going. So we're 95%. 94 is fine. And I think 93 is also fine. We're going to zoom, zoom up the side here and in through the side of the knock and hold camp here. Then we're going to mount up and we're just going to run all the way down here. Now you can either go off to the right and down the bottom, or you can run through here and come down the bottom. And then there's going to be two mini bosses that we need to deal with here. Now the two mini bosses are the last percent for the dungeon, obviously. Um, you want to try and kill them as close together as you possibly can because they enrage, you know, one of them enrages when the other one dies. So... They'll have a couple of abilities you need to watch out for. Balar will cast a rage, uh, Ravaging Spear. You just need to sidestep. Also do a Veminent Charge. You want to have them positioned at the wall. So when the Veminent Charge goes off, it's going into the wall. The Tackle cast Broad Stomp. It's a big frontal 20 yard range. You can see it going off there. Just sidestep. That Veminent Charge was pointed out the wrong way. So just try and position them as the tank where they're always going to go into that wall. It just reduces any kind of travel time, means more uptime on the, the mini bosses, you know, kills them. Uh, the tackle also have that blood curdling uh, scream or roar or whatever it's called. Just make sure you kick it. Otherwise, everyone's getting feared and that's far than I, uh, less far less than ideal. That's, that's English. That's what I'm looking for. Um, but that's it. You shouldn't have too many issues on there. Veminent charge into the wall there. So that's exactly what we want. And then we're on to the final boss. So let's do it. It's final boss time. But first I need to share tech with you, okay? See that red marker? On the bottom of this red marker is a teeny tiny shield at the base of this rock. As the tank, you want to take Balakan here. Balaka? Bala Balaki. Balakar Khan. You want to tank the boss about here. When someone gets targeted with the spear, the iron spear, they're going to move around this side through the shield and line it up with the boss. When the boss throws the spear and then goes to charge to the stampede to collect it, the shield on the rock will stop him as long as it is lined up. Less travel room, no damage, big pews, exactly what you want. Okay, so as the tank, just bring it over here and then the rest is all your group's responsibility. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so start this fight and go through it now like all bosses balak can't balak why can't i say his name khan i'm just gonna call him khan hits like a hammer okay so pay attention has a rending strike which leaves a bleed on you that increases the damage from savage strike by 500 percent be sure to have your mitigation rolling and a cd ready does hit really hard now here comes the iron spear lined up with the little shield 
iron spear goes out so you take the damage from the iron spear but then the charge goes off the charge stops no one took any damage absolutely perfect as the tank reposition once again and that's just what you're going to do your group's just going to play peekaboo on the other side of that rock lining it up with the shield Carnal have an upheaval it's a giant frontal you just need to move out of the way so it is very obvious there's really no excuse for getting hit just move out of the way of the giant frontal at 60 percent health intermission will start uh will start and you hey can play this the same way that you did with soul render in sangy d if you move the boss away there'll be travel time while khan runs to the point so you can see 60 percent starts off here and the boss runs you could move it well away if you really wanted to to chalk out a few more percent now once into intermission position the four stormcasters will be made active each stormcaster will cast stormbolt pre-assign interrupts otherwise as a dk you can grip the furthest two start a bomb limb that'll suck in the closest two easily and then away you go they're nice and grouped up then you want to rotate interrupts and stuns you do need to have something for this though as it will absolutely wreck your group so just be aware of that you'll have to dodge lightning pull, uh, puddles on the ground as well you can see them going on here this is in the intermission as well so just make sure that you're not standing in the bad stuff and that is pretty much it now khan will cast conductive strike on the tank in this phase crucial the healer dispels this immediately you as the tank are going to take damage each second from the dot and then also damage from the thundering strike cast as well so there's a lot of damage coming your way throughout this fight khan will also cast static spear on a random player when hit it'll pull everyone to that location uh, death's advance does not work on this you can meld it off though and feign death and vanish and things like that if it does go on you so know that you can do that and it means that no one will get sucked to you which means you don't have to move out of the way for that stampeding charge it means you might not get a bad overlap and you might actually you know completely negate that damage which is absolutely huge the boss will maintain its big frontal in this phase but now it's called crackling upheaval uh, it does a big frontal but when you've got the blue circle around you a, a bad little thundering void zone will spawn out of that so just make sure that you move the boss away as soon as it spawns you can see all the puddles going off there and then i just move to a clear area so that is pretty much it hopefully this helps you out if you've got any questions hit me up in the comments below otherwise like comment subscribe thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video make sure you check out the other dungeon guys on the channel I'll see you all next time. See you, fam. Legends, if you really want to help me out and support the channel, please consider pledging to our Patreon. Tier 3 and above will see you getting your name at the end of every single video we create, as well as some hidden perks in the Discord. Thanks so much.